and weep. Mets fans, Phillies now once again eight games ahead of the Mets in the National League East. Braves to play yet tonight. They're eight and a half back. And the magic number for the Phillies to clinch the division is seven. I like it. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. We welcome you to Phillies Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance, along with Ricky Patalico and Ben Davis. I'm Michael Barkan. John Cruck coming in a moment. There is a long list of stars for the Phillies on this day. Ricky Bo, yeah. pitching and hitting. Take your pick. Uh, I'm going to start with pitching, and I'm not going with the starting pitcher. Colby, Colby Allard wasn't very good. Uh, I guess he minimized damage, if you want to say it like yeah. that. But Taiwan Walker? Tawan Walker came Bravo. back. I mean, three innings, no no runs. Uh, it, it wasn't like he had strikeout stuff, but he wasn't afraid of contact. Uh, his, his, his sinker and his fastball were up over a mile per hour in this game. So that's a good sign for him, but not afraid of contact. I, I know I, a lot of people look at it and say, well, he got hit hard here and there. Doesn't matter. He got outs. That's what that's what counts in a game like this. It's a four nothing ball game. This thing could have gone a lot more further south. He kept them right where they should have been. And Ben, then the bats, four nothing. They're dead and buried. But no, they were not. Bryce Harper gets off the Schneid. Hadn't hit a home run since August 9th. He hits one. no. He hits two. Yeah, Pretty especially good. the way Severino was throwing the baseball. He was dominant throughout the course of this game. And then you think 4 nothing almost seemed insurmountable with the way he was throwing the baseball. But Bryce Harper single-handedly gets this ball club back in the game. A couple homers, three RBIs on the day. He's got 28 homers and 82 RBIs, at hitting 290. And it was nice to see him get off the schneid. But Cal Stevenson, bravo, young man. Bravo. Yes. Two hits on the day and obviously the game winner to put them up. It was, uh, it was a fun game to watch. Let's go across the street to the booth. And we check in with John Clark. Called today's game with Scott Franschke. John, Cal Stevenson. Wait, did you, call, did you just call me John Clark? No, did I? Yeah. Uh, Ricky shaking his head. Yeah, yeah, you you're way better looking than John Clark. So, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, it, but he's like six foot eight and well, I'm four foot two. I mean, come true. on, Michael. I, I apologize. Flathead, no team. I get it. I get it. Okay. Now, John. Apologies, but as we continue, Cal Stevenson, John, how about what he did today? Well, he was huge, and you don't win pennants, you don't get into the postseason unless you get contributions from people who you didn't think to start the season were going to provide con uh, contributions. But not only the, the hitting, but the defense, too, that he robbing J.D. Mar Martinez uh, of a ball that would have tied the game up, and who knows how that would have turned out. Uh, if they did tie it up there in the eighth inning. But, uh, yeah, Cal Stevenson was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, he said, he told us in the post game, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't get a lot of opportunities. Well, after today, he's, he's probably going to get yeah. some more, I would hope. Uh, how confident are you that Bryce Harper has kind of broken out? And I, I, I say this very cautiously because he hit the two home runs, and then that last at bat, we saw the elbow thing come on again. So, your thoughts on on all three of those things? Well, look, it's beautiful when he's hitting the ball the other way. It's great, but then he gets something else and he pulls it for for a two run homer, and uh, you know, gave the Phillies a chance to win, put them down one after that two run homer, but. Yeah, his swings were good. It's just that one swing in his last at bat. Uh, you know, you you can tell that it wasn't right. And uh, I think this is something that he's just going to have to to deal with for the rest of the year. And you hope it doesn't. Uh, he's not sidelined for an extended period of time uh, moving forward. But uh, look, we know Bryce is going to play. He's going to play with pain, and uh, you know he's good enough to figure out. Okay. How can I go about these at bats where if I swing and miss, this is going to hurt like hell? I can't swing and miss anymore, and that's why I think that's why he's staying on balls a lot, a lot more than what we normally see. Johnny, whenever we talk about the bullpen, we always talk about Jeff Hoffman, Matt Strom, Carlos yeah. Estevez, Jose Alvarado. Are we overlooking a Ryan Kirkering? This dude is filthy. He went through a little bit of a funk, but the ERA is at 2.03. This dude is nasty. Oh, he's filthy. I, 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 you know, I watched. I don't know how a righty would ever get a hit off of him because of that sweeper and then the high velocity fastball that he can throw up in the zone. He can run it in on those righties. Uh, but he's been a godsend to this bullpen. And, you know, we talk about when the Phillies are healthy offensively, how it stretches their lineup. Well, what Orion Kirkering is doing right now stretches the bullpen. 
you know, you can go games now, a close game like it was today, and not have to use Matt Strom, not have to use Jose Alvarado. Now these guys are going to be available tomorrow, and a lot of it is due because of what Taiwan Walker did. He ate up three three innings and didn't give up nothing, gave the Phillies a chance, and then once they got close, then that bullpen shut it down like they've been doing pretty much all year. John, just a, a moment back to Bryce Harper. I don't want to minimize what he did because he had been without a home run for 30 games since August 9th. He gets two today. Did you notice? And he's going against Luis Severino for both of them, who's only throwing the ball an average 97 miles an hour. Uh, what did you notice about his swing? Well, it was the same swing he had last night against Quintana, where he hit that line drive to left center field, his first at bat for the double. Uh, you know, when when Bryce is staying on balls uh, and hitting the ball the other way, uh, especially fastballs the other way, uh, that's a good sign because when he does get something off speed, he can keep it fair like he did his second home run. Uh, look, I, I worry every swing Bryce takes. I worry about the elbow, the wrist, and... Uh, you know, whatever else is ailing him, because at this time of year, there's going to be a lot ailing these guys. But uh, he just seems to, when the team needs him the most, he seems to come through. And, you know, look, they were dead in the water. And it, to me, I was telling Scott Fransky in the eighth inning, I said, man, it, if we end up winning this game, this is like stealing one. Well, Bryce helped, helped open the, the vault mm -hmm. to, to help the Phillies steal this game today from the Mets, because... They were done. I mean, it was four nothing. It, like Ben said, it seemed like it was a hundred to nothing, and uh, you know it wouldn't have surprised me if some people started walking out. But then, you know, Mr. Harper shows up and does what he does and uh, gave this team a chance to win. But if you can give this bullpen a chance to keep it close, they have been doing that tremendously here of late, and uh, gives your offense a shot. Four hits by the bullpen, no runs by the bullpen. They're spectacular as is. Mr. Harper, as are you, John Kruk. Thanks so much for joining us.